welcome to part two. If you haven't watched part one already, please watch that before you watch this. Um, but in part two, I'm machining the upper rail and other components that we'll be making to finish the shooting board. Uh, this upper rail is having a rebate machined in it to take a piece of perspex. And I'll show you this in close up in a minute. So this is just a close up so you can see it a bit more clearly. Um, here's the upper perspex in its rebated piece of sycamore yet to be screwed to the sycamore. I'll uh, drill and countersink some holes for that. Screw that together. That goes on top to stop the plane from tilting and use and the thrust block slides in between the top of the upper baseboard and the underside of this upper perspex. So here I'm using a drill bit which is the same diameter as the slot made in the end stop and I'm scribing it so I can see where the slot is on the inside face of the thrust block and um, I can see the start and stop points as well so for this I need to work out where to put the threaded inserts for two bolts and now I'm just um, using a pencil gauge to uh, highlight the line I made with the drill bit and the bolts need to be about 30 millimeters from the end of the slot so just need to scribe 30 millimeters onto the inside face of the thrust block now I'm just carefully screwing the threaded inserts into the two holes that I've drilled okay so now we've got the um, upper perspex strip and rail Taking that off, off of here. Just need to <coughs> mark the perspex out. Let's put five screws in, much the same as I did for the bottom one. Nice and centered hole. Okay, so after screwing that first one in, I'm now going to do the same on the other end, and then do all the three other ones in between. The end stop is 17.6 millimeters thick so I need 8.8 .8, which is half of that. I need to set my marking gauge up to 8.8 .8 millimeters and then scribe across the grain onto the end of the upper rail for a slot that I'm going to make for the bolt which connects it to the top of the end stop. Okay so I've set up a quarter inch 6.35 millimeter diameter spiral bit in the wood wrap. Got my horizontal table in. Here's the perspex and top rail. And that fits in against the front face of the wrap body and then sort of just configure it roughly in the middle. And then what I use is one of these bar clamps. I can't remember the it's a true grip. Anyway that goes in there conveniently. This creates a channel now between the clamp and the front face of the wrap. Just uh, tighten up. That way this can't come forward at all now, but it can go left and right. So just add a couple of dabs of hot melt glue at either end. That will stop it. Move that on. On that. On there dry a minute. So it's dry it will prevent it moving left and right. The router is only going to be moving backwards and forwards so there shouldn't be any left right movement in the actual thing. So I've got these very very difficult to see scribes here and I'll set up the bit so that it's in the middle of that, that line. Okay so here I've got two stop blocks that this hex bolt head goes between that determines the backwards and forwards so if I push it push the router back it's that backstop when I bring it forward, it hits this front stop. So that's my slot that I'm routing backwards and forwards. I've then got the depth. I need to do a few cuts at a time. Take my time because I'm going to be cutting through the perspex and the wood when we get to the bottom section.
Right, that's that one, let's do the next one. Just needs cleaning up with the file. More rasp. Should be fine. Alright. Now just drilling a hole in the top of each end stop to take a threaded insert for the bolts which hold on the upper rail. Now it's time to add the slick strip, which is an adhesive backed flexible plastic film which has low friction so it enables the plane to run along really easily along the front of the shooting board. So here you've just got to have a bit of a wrestle with it and then eventually once you've lined it up you can roll it down with a suitable rolling machine or device as you see here and then cut the strip to, to uh, its final dimensions with a scalpel. Uh, but I clamped it up like this as you can see overnight just to make sure it was stuck down. So that's the inside face of one of the thrust blocks. So the plane will hit against that face and go through and it might splinter that out. So I'm going to basically plane that just by hand. It doesn't really have to be that accurate. But we'll just uh, shout for the back. You could do this with a rasp or a file or a block plane. You just take the back edge off. That means that, um, well, in theory at least, when the plane comes through, it might help. I think if your thrust block is a, a real piece of wood, then you definitely have to do this. Okay, so to set up the uh, shooting board, this is the end stop, this is the thrust block, and the upper rail just sits on top of there, lines up with these threaded inserts, and then this screw and washer just pop into there. Set that down until it gets close. Now this is for, without this ply spacer, this is a 6mm spacer, this works for my older planes so that this top perspex rail hits the sole of the plane just above the blade, so it's not hitting the blade. So when we put this in underneath, the bolt goes through the spacer into the threaded insert. You've just got to make sure that it doesn't overflow this inside face. And then it's just a question of setting the bottom of the square with the perspex here on the lower perspex rail and pushing that along until it hits the top of the square. Hold it in position and lock it down. And you might want to do that gently, so quite a loose fitting and then do the other one at the other end. So at this end, obviously you want to put the spacer block in as well if we're setting it up for the, the Lee Nielsen 51. So again, pressing it against the bottom rail and pushing this upper rail backwards and forwards until it hits. And then make sure that spacer doesn't move too much. Just keep tweaking it until you get it just right. You can also use the shooting board without this top rail, you don't have to use it. So once you've got the top rail in, calibrated the square at both ends, now we've got the spacer blocks in, Lee Nielsen 51, now it sits on here, and goes up against the two rails. So now it's just a question of setting the thrust blocks. There's the beveled back edge. So the plane's going to be cutting this direction. And it's just a question of getting some nice big penny washers to uh, spread the load across this, um, this slot because otherwise it will 
indent close to the slot and ruin it. So once again, we get this loosely connected, just that slightly so it can move a little bit. Get the plane on, move it across till it hits the sole of the plane. So the blade is back here at the minute, as you can see. The sole of the plane is right up against the Perspex runners and I've pushed this thrust block all the way against the sole. So now I've just got to tighten these up gently. I don't want to go mad because they might shift backwards or forwards. So you should be able to see when you put your square against there that that thrust block is pulled out the same distance as the two Perspex rails. This one here should be set back so the plane blade doesn't hit this end stop, it only hits this uh, thrust block. So you put your square against the Perspex rail at the bottom and against the inside face of this thrust block, your work is being planed, not square. The beauty about the thrust block and the end stop is that you can put a paper shim in there, basically change the angle of the face of this thrust block. So you can put the shim in at that end or at that end in between these two before you tighten this up. Another thing is that this thrust block will need some calibration to the sole of the plane. So this is the sort of maiden voyage of this board. It's cut in there a little bit because I've just gone in with a small swipe. That should now be all right. Okay, so I've got this um, piece of sycamore to match this upper rail. This is about seven millimeters thick, and um, it's too long at the moment. So I put the plane on because this is intended just for the Lee Nielsen 51. Uh, there's a about a one inch gap here for this rail to press and keep the the plane in. So what I need to do is line it up with the end here and then use my square just to and then mark off underneath so that's pressed up against there all right so i've marked off where i need to cut that down and i can just make plain that square and i just need to cut two slots similar to the upper row at either end and that can be fitted on there and then it can be adjustable backwards and forwards most of the time it's going to be fixed in one place for this plane. Now I'm just using my marking gauge to uh, put a cross mark for the uh, threaded insert which will take the bolt uh, which will attach this sidebar. So you can see drilling and adding the threaded insert. Once you've done this you can then bolt the sidebar on.
That's the end of part two. Move over to part three now to find out how to do the 45 degree fence. What you see here, and you're new to this channel, please subscribe for more updates as they become available. Otherwise you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter or Pinterest, so that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks and see you again soon.